Once you've created your OneNote class notebook and you have downloaded it from Office 365 and it is now open in OneNote for Windows 10, which you can see here, it's time to actually start adding content to your notebook so that it's ready for students to use. So right now what we're going to go through is how to build your content library. The content library is like your digital filing cabinet and this is where you can include all the different resources that you want your students to use or to have access to. Now keep in mind the content library is read only so you can put any type of document that you want in here that you have in a digital format or you could create your document directly into a blank page in OneNote but the students are not going to be able to write on it. When you first create your class notebook you do get a little section here that sort of gives you a little summary as to what the content library is all about. If you don't want to hold on to this section once you have an understanding of the content library you can right click on it and get rid of it so it's not part of your class notebook. But to start, what you're going to be doing is you need to add sections to your content library. Now if you recall, when you created your class notebook, you created sections for your students. So you can see here my test student has a number of different sections. You decide how you want to organize your content library. The content library will be blank when you first create your notebook. So if you want to create sections for your content library that sort of match the sections that you created for your student, that's one way to organize your work so that the students can find it easier. Some teachers decide to do it a little bit different and they have broader uh, categories such as homework, classwork, handouts, that type of thing. But in this example here, you can see I'm trying to match my sections with the student sections. So I'm going to get rid of this page here because I don't really need it. And now I have all of my other sections. So for you to get started, what you're going to do to begin adding your new sections is you're going to open up the content library by clicking on this little carrot to the left. And then what you're going to do is come down to the bottom where it says add section and you're going to click that button. So we're going to add a new section, and this is going to be my science section. And all I need to do is hit enter, and I now have a brand new section. So think of sections in the concept library like tab sections in a three ring binder. So that's going to divide your content, and you can add as many pages as you want to each section because this is a digital notebook as opposed to a physical notebook. So now that we have sections ready, it's time to start actually adding digital documents that we want students to have access to. So I'm going to come over to my math section here. And when I click on math and I move over to the next column, you're going to see that I already have pages associated with this section. So you always want to be sure before you start working in a section that you are in the section that you want to add content to. So you can see here math is sort of highlighted. I have already added some content to my math section of the content library and I have actually further subdivided my pages because you have the availability to make your pages into subpages. So for example, in math, I might be dividing my content by unit and you can see here the pages underneath unit three are all indented and it just is a more visual way of organizing information. It's just a tip, you don't have to do it that way, but I will show you how to do it that way. Just to give you an example of the type of content you can put in the content library, I'm going to click on the first page here. Now this first page here I created directly in OneNote. I took a YouTube video that I want the students to watch and I literally copied and pasted the URL directly in and it will automatically embed that video into my one page document which is a really handy easy feature to use. Once it embeds you do have the ability to resize it if you wish. And then I also added some clip art, I typed in a question that I want the students to think about, and I added a box so that the students can type directly in here. Again, I created this directly in OneNote. The other page that I have in here is not one that I created directly in OneNote. This is a PDF of a document that I want the students to use as practice based on what we talked about in class. So the students can annotate directly on this page. I inserted this as a PDF. So if you already have digital documents such as PDFs, Word documents, PowerPoint, etc. 
all of those can be inserted for the students to annotate on top of. Now keep in mind when you insert a document like this, the students are going to be working on a flat image. So if you do insert something like a PowerPoint that has motion in it, the, that those motions are not going to be seen on the screen in the traditional way you would see in a PowerPoint. So let's get started with actually adding some content. So I'm going to show you how to add a page in addition how to make a page a subpage if you choose to further organize. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click add page. You can see it kind of put it in between unit three and unit four so I can move stuff around if it doesn't come into the place where I want it. So let's say I want to create a section called unit five or unit a uh, page called unit five. So here's my unit five page. And now I want to actually create another page. And again, digital, create as many pages as you want. And I'm going to put in practice worksheet. That's what I'm going to title it. As I type it on this line, it automatically names that page over here. So you can see here, this comes right underneath Unit 5, but it's not actually part of Unit 5. So if I want to make this a part of Unit 5, I can do something called making it a sub page. So if I right click on practice worksheet, I can go ahead and I can make it a sub page. So now you can see here it's sort of further organized. This is just a tip. You do not have to do this. So now that I have this blank page, I can either again type directly on it and give the students work that way, or I can insert a file printout of a document. So if you come up to the insert menu, and you come up over here to where it says printout, this is going to allow you to insert any digital type of document that you have on your computer and basically it takes a screenshot of it and places it on the screen. The difference between printout and file is a file attachment attaches the document almost like you would attach something to an email. So the user would actually have to double click on it to actually view the contents of that particular file that's being attached. Whereas printout, which we're going to select, I'm going to choose this PDF that I want the students to work on that I have for them and I'm going to click open. So you can see here it took a screenshot of that PDF and it's right here on the screen. And when you do select printout it also includes the PDF as an attachment. So if you think this is going to be confusing for your students or you th it's going to be cluttering the page, you can just click on this and get rid of it. The one other tip I have for when building your content library, particularly when you are inserting something that you want the students to annotate on, is to lock the document down to the page so that when the students are writing on it with their finger or their stylus, whatever they're going to be using, it doesn't necessarily move around. So the way to do that is by clicking on the document so that it's activated. You can see I have these dotted lines here. You have you can resize it from the corner, but you also have the ability to then right click on it and click set picture as background. And that can be very helpful to students, particularly younger students, who might accidentally start moving the docu document around while they're trying to type it. So building your content library is very important in terms of organization, and you have a number of different ways you can use it. And again, my final tip, just make sure that you are, when you are adding content, that you are in the content library and you are on the section where you want to insert your content.